the scheduler selects one of the processes from the ready queue and allocates the CPU to it. So which algorithm or which scheduling criteria should the scheduler use so that the system performance is the best? So it can take care of multiple things while deciding on the scheduling criteria. One of them is CPU utilization. That is the algorithm that is being used. Is it keeping the CPU as busy as possible? Now theoretically the CPU utilization can range from 0 to 100 percent. 0 means nothing, the CPU is sitting idle and 100 percent that means the CPU is being used all the time. But in a real system it actually ranges from 40 percent for a lightly loaded system to 90 percent for a heavily loaded system. The one of the other criteria would be the throughput. What is throughput? Throughput is the number of processes that complete their execution per unit time. Now if we are having long processes in the system, each process will require several time units. So that means the throughput would be very less because in one time unit not even one process can be completed. If the processes are very short then we can execute or complete maybe tens of processes in one time unit then our throughput increases. So throughput is the number of processes completing execution per unit time. Another scheduling criteria could be the turnaround time. The turnaround time is the amount of time that is spent by a particular process in its complete execution right from submission. That means right from the time it first comes into the ready queue to the time it terminates. So that period of time, that interval of time is called the turnaround time. And during this time, it would spend a lot of time waiting in the ready queue, executing on the CPU, waiting in input output queues, then performing the input output, then going back to the ready queue waiting over there. So there would be multiple time periods spent waiting in queues and time spent executing on CPU. So the sum of all these periods would, rep, would contribute towards the turnaround time of that process. Now what is the waiting time of a process? The waiting time of a process is the time it has spent waiting in the ready queue. So it might be waiting in the queues for input output also. But since we are more concerned with the time it is waiting for a CPU, so the waiting time is referred to the time it has spent waiting in the ready queue. And there could be multiple times it came in the ready queue after doing some input output or waiting for some other events. So the sum of all those periods it spent waiting in the ready queue is, the, is contributing to the waiting time. Now we know that the turnaround time is the time when the process first came into the ready queue and it spent multiple times doing the run and the wait and finally it terminated. So the time when it first came here till the time when it terminated this interval is referred to as the turnaround time. But this is not a good criteria for computing the performance of the system. Maybe we can also see that till from the first time it came to the ready queue till the time its first response was produced. So suppose process P1 came in the ready queue, it was given the CPU so it was running and its first response when it outputted some results on the monitor, so it went for an input output and it output some results on the monitor. 
So the first response that was received from the process, now this is the response time. So in an interactive system, this response may be produced very soon, whereas turnout time may not be the best criteria. So in some systems, we utilize the response time as the scheduling criteria. It depends upon the application. So if we want to optimize the scheduling criteria, what is what that we desire? We want to maximize the ut utilization of the CPU. We also want to maximize the throughput. That means the number of processes which are finishing or completing their execution per unit time. Now the turnaround time, the waiting time and the response time, this we want to minimize. Now in most cases, we optimize the average measure. That means we compute these for all the processes in the system and we take their average and we optimize the average measure. But in some circumstances, we might prefer to optimize the minimum or the maximum values rather than optimizing the average. Like for example, if we want to guarantee that all users get a good service, we may want to minimize the maximum response time. That means whatever was the ris maximum response time of any process, we might want to minimize that. So here we are not talking about average values but minimizing or maximizing these values.